What up, dudes? It's Gaz, and welcome back to the Warframe video. So we had the mother of all dev streams yesterday with five dev workshops posted after the fact. We'll be going over one of the aspects of those dev workshops, shield gating today. And just to make it so we can have a lot of info in here, we're going to also include the Warframe base stat changes and mod buffs today, too. So before we get into it, make sure you're still on this channel. We do daily Warframe video uploads. I'm going to have videos on like most of the dev workshops. And also, check out the live stream. I'll be live later tonight uh, with a variety of games, and I'm going to have some Twitch drops active so you can get some free stuff in the games I'm playing. Okay, so that's about it. Let's get into these dev workshops. Let's first go over shield gating. I'm going to show you how shield gating works on the current version of the game. So, I have 300 shields right now. If I was to regen, or rather, if my shield was to be broken, I would get 1.3 seconds of invincibility gray health. I cannot really die during that gray health time. Now, if I were to, as you can see right there, I just, my shield broke. I'm waiting for it to regen. If I were to jump into the line of fire right now without my sh shield fully regen, I would take, I would only have like 0.3 seconds of invincibility. But now that I have 300 uh, shields again, I can face tank the damage for a brief moment. And now, as you can see, as long, if I don't get out of the way, I'm dead. So how would we, how did we remedy that on the current version of the game? Well, it really came down to something that DE apparently didn't like very much. You're utilizing an old item in the game called the Decaying Dragon Key to make my 300 shields on Saren go to, like, 75 shields on Saren. So, shields are greatly reduced while key is equipped. My 300 uh, shields became 75 shields, and now I can face tank them all day long. So, that's one of the reasons that they're changing this. Um, basically, modding four shields was stupid. Uh, so, yeah, as you can see, we're not going to just keep face tanking because my shield fully regens from my molt cast now. Just with the build I have set up. So with Rolling Guard and a little bit of smart play, I can just infinitely do that over and over again. And I have plenty of times. So yeah, that's what they're actually going to be removing. Uh, or rather, one of the things they're reworking here. So the re how I did that, I used the Brief Respite mod, which on ability cast converts uh, energy to shields. And I've also got Augur Secrets doing the same thing to a smaller degree. So these things right here were letting me get over 75 shields. I basically got 140 shields from one Molt cast. Uh, and that this entire build setup is not going to work anymore. Let me just go ahead and say that. Decaying Dragon Key is dead. It literally is dead. DE, DE ended it. So let's get into it. Um, and just, you know, we can experience this together. We'll be covering parts of this uh, dev workshop. And, uh, you know, I'll be covering some of the things out here that I actually consider important. So as stated earlier, we got the shield changes here. And then down here, we're going to have some... Uh, mod changes. So let's get into it. I've got a lot to talk about. I've got a lot of meta, you know, breakdown discussion stuff to talk about here because, you know, I've used the meta stuff quite a bit. I also usually I'm trying to design the meta stuff quite a bit on this channel. So let's get into it. We're going to read this verbatim. I have read this over multiple times. So you're in the right place if you want a well-informed uh, overview of this. So let's start. Warframe Shield Changes. By the way, this is on the General Quality of Life uh, Dev Workshop. There are many avenues for Tenno to approach Warframe survivability. Usually it's enough, or usually it's through increasing health and armor values or making use of uh, damage re resistance features on certain mods or abilities. Example, for shields. Uh, however, there is an incentive to do the opposite, like I just said. The current meta encourages players to reduce the shield's uh, value as much as possible to make use of shield game mechanics. I just showed you how that works. Uh, as developers, we're stuck in a strange position. On one hand, we see player ingenuity and creative ways of engaging with mechanics. I'll be honest, I never liked the decaying dragon key thing. I stubbornly didn't use it for like over a year. And I'm like, DE's just not going to nerf this. Fine, I'll start using it. DE finally is nerfing it. So that's, in my eyes, this is actually a good change. The game is too easy right now. Uh, and you can still do this. You'll still be able to do the same thing as before. But we'll get into that later. Um, we see proof that shields are not offering the same value to players as other survivability tools. To the point where you are rewarded for having the lowest shield stat possible. It, they they finally realized. They finally realized. Grendel was so tanky. Not only because he had so much health and armor, but he only had like 10 shield. His shield gate was godly. So yeah, Grendel is kind of getting nerfed a little bit with the shield getting in this patch. We want to change this so that Tenno are incentivized to increase their shield, uh, their shield stat instead of reducing it. To do so, we're approaching this challenge in two key ways. Okay, so first, they're buffing Tenno shields overall. Tenno shields will have 50% damage reduction to all types. So, big Hildren buff right there. Uh, if you don't know who Hildren is, Hildren is like basically a massive shield character that doesn't even have energy bar. She uses her shields for energy. 
And hey, another 25% DR on Hildren. Don't mind if I do. Like she could, she also has an ability to restore shields called Pillage, which will become a lot more powerful with this uh, this change because it not only does it remove enemy armor, but it takes their armor and gives it to you as shields. So you're gonna be fully regenerating your shield. You'll be getting full shield gating, and they are buffing shield gating uh, for situations like this. So potentially get a extra Hildren for Pillage if you don't already have her. And she was already good, so it's not that big of a change. Um, yeah, 25% DR for Hildren, uh, or rather 50% DR for all shields. We're also buffing a few spe uh, shield-specific mods with recharge rate in mind. I've already tested these, uh, so basically, let's throw it in here. Fast Deflection is going to have a minus 45% shield recharge delay. It's also got plus 90% shield recharge. We'll have to test that when it comes out, but the problem with shield recharge mods is that if you're actively being shot at, they do literally nothing. So, yeah. Uh, Fortitude... It's now going to have uh, a plus 40%, or rather, a, it's going to have a plus 100% shield capacity, and they're also going to increase the chance they resist knockdown to 40%. Vigilante Vigor is going to be uh, giving you minus 30% shield recharge delay, and I believe it also gives you shield capacity, too. Why would you be mining for shield capacity? We'll get into that shield getting part here. Right here. Since, secondly, we're reworking shield getting. This is the most important part right here if you do endurance runs, and you basically run builds like that Saren build I just showed. Shield getting was added to the game back in 2020 with update 27.2 as a way to prevent one-shots, especially at higher level content. We feel that this mechanic accomplished that goal, but the implementation of it had an unintended side effect. Players are rewarded for having the smallest shield stat and fastest shield recharge stat to make, sure, make use of the full, full shield break mechanic. I was saying that they sh should have noticed this, like honestly, on like, the first couple weeks, but here we are like three years later. Uh, and at least it's finally getting changed, I guess. As mentioned above, our intention is to offer players more benefits for having larger shield value. So shield getting is getting a rework. The core mechanic is staying. When you lose all shields, you gain a period of invincibility. What is changing is how this period of time invincibility scales and how much shields you have. Thankfully, they made a chart for us right here. We're going to have a new mod to kind of replace the decaying dragon key in a way. Part 1. The shield gate duration will scale with the amount of shields you had upon shield break. So, I just showed you how it works right uh, in the current version of the game. Full shields on break, 1.3 seconds of invincibility. With the new version of the game on October 18th, depending on your modded value, the window could be anywhere from 0.33 seconds to 2.5 seconds at 11.50 shield. To receive the original 1.3 second shield gate, players will need around 325 shields upon shield break. I'm just going to go ahead and spoil it. I jumped ahead. They are buffing the base shields of basically every frame in the game. For example, my Saren Prime that we were just looking at earlier, her maximum shield on the live version of the game is 300. Once this goes through, her maximum shields will be 370. So she'll have over the, the standard shield gate, but the problem is getting to that number in the first place. How are you going to get to 375 shields? Uh, if I'm getting 140 shields from this ability from one cast... I would need basically two casts of this and a little bit extra to get to that number. So we're going to have to change some builds for sure. Um, or we'll talk about that mod in a second. So uh, builds are going to need to change. Um, so you can see the full overview of the gate duration versus the shields deplete in the graph below. So uh, basically, if, if we were to be running the Decaying Dragon Key, we'd have like, what, 70 shields? So you'd be at like this. This would be where you'd be at with the Decaying Dragon Key with a new meta. Um, but also, they, they specifically nerfed the Decaying Dragon Key, too. I'm just trying to give you an example. So my Saren at 370 shields should be, like, right around here, which would be a slight buff over what we currently have. Uh, but in a way, it's actually not really anywhere near that because, as stated earlier, we are looking at regenerating 70 shields versus regenerating 370 shields on a build that restores 140 energy per molt cast. But as you can see right here, if you somehow do get your 1,000 shields back, you can have up to 2.5 seconds of invincibility. Um, that's why, like I said earlier, Pillage is going to be really great for that. Maybe Mag, maybe Parodia, Harrow, etc., etc. So keep an eye out for shield gating meta changes when this actually comes out. Another part, partially depleted shields do not have a separate shield gate duration. So it was very feast or famine before. As you can see right here, this dashed line at the top is going to be the this, is the, this is the current live version of the game. Full shield break, 1.3 seconds. If you had partial shield break, it was always 0.3 seconds. Now it's like, okay, how many shields did you have? The lowest of the low is going to be when you're at like 10 shields. But as you get like, you know, multiple hundred shields, you're getting back to a normal shield gate. 
So in a lot of situations, it will be better, um, but probably for specifically level 10,000, uh, you know, endurance builds like this one, there will be situations where your shield gate will be much, much, much worse, and you're going to have to change your build. Like, straight up, you will. But yes, now the partial shield gate will, will scale with the amount of maximum shields you currently could have. So, for example, um, if your max shield is 1,200, but your shields are broken with only 350 available, you'd get a 1.3 second of shield gate. That would, like, so it just scale, like, it basically goes from the lowest of the low down here, the highest of the high is going to be 1,100, basically, for shields, or 1,200 in their example. With these changes, your shields, the faster your shields regen, the more shield gain you'll get. So the, the centering build will still work. It's just gonna it's gonna require a lot more uh, effort. And a lot, it's gonna require this mod, basically. So here is the savior of the decaying dragon key uh, crutchers. We have the new mod catalyzing shields. And this will be given to all players through an alert system the week of the Abyss of the Goth update, October 18th. With the changes to shield gating, we want to offer players different ways to interact with the system without having a, to mod for the most shields possible. I don't think people will be modding for the most shields possible, personally. To accomplish this, you're introducing a new corrupted mod, Catalyzing Shields. So what it, the way it's worded is kind of kind of weird. So basically what it does, it reduces your maximum shields by 80%. It says times 0.2. You, you have 20% of your shields, basically. And then it makes your full shield gate duration 1.3. So we'll give the exact example of Saren Prime. So after the update, I'll have 370 shields with on Saren Prime. So 20% of 370 is going to be like 60 shields. Um, 74 shields. So that would be great uh, for this setup. But the problem would be that I'm using a mod slot for this. In the current version of the game, I'm not using a mod slot for this. And by the way, the mod is not an Exilus. So I have to go on my build for Saren. And thankfully, Saren is like ridiculously strong. So I could easily find a way to, to replace this. So what I'd end up doing my Saren build, I'd be, end up losing Augur Secrets. I'd lose 24% strength. And the mod is what, 13 mod drain? 13 mod drain, it would go right here. And I could do the exact same thing on the Saren build that I'm doing right now, but I'm losing one mod slot. Now, that's that's Saren. That is Saren, a frame that has overwhelming power. Um, there will be certain frames that this will definitely hurt more on, uh, where it's like, oh, yeah, my Zaku build, for example, was... It was using shield gating. It was also using 200% power strength. It was also using as much range as possible. I don't have any more room on my Zaku build. Too bad. Find a way to regen your shields, basically. Maybe maybe think about using Condemn from Harrow or Pillage. Uh, that's basically what DE is saying to those kinds of builds. If, you, if your build is beyond min-maxed, you have to sacrifice one mod slot with this new change. So, at least my Saren can do that, but there's going to be certain... Like, my, my Sevagoth build from a couple months ago is... I don't think it can do it anymore. My Sevagoth build is probably just dead for shield gate. So we had, what, 100, we have, we're going to have a lot of, I'm going to show some shield buffs here too. Yeah, the Sevagoth build is just not going to work. I could technically take off like, oh gosh, I don't think I can take any of this stuff off. Yeah, I need, I need all the auger I can get. Um, hey, may, maybe, yeah, if I take off one of these mod slots, maybe I can make it work. Yeah, how about that? Since it will be like 75 shield, I guess. I don't know if I'll be able to shield gate from my one. But these are the things you have to start look, thinking about, guys. Is this build going to work anymore? Is that build going to work anymore? The, the, this is going to really shake up the meta as far as shielding specifically. So make things that have massive shield restore even more valuable. Like I said earlier, Protea, really good. Shield grenades give you tons of shields, give you longer shield gate too. Harrow, uh, first ability condemn. This is his helmet ability. It does not give you over. It does not give you uh, shields you hit an overguarded enemy, unfortunately. But if you got enough range, you can cover a gigantic area with condemn to give you. Well, with this build, 400 shields per. So you get the full shield gate and three enemies caught. 400 shields per, uh, I think it's like 1,200 uh, shields for the maximum shield gate. This could work quite well, as could, you know, pillage and things of that nature. But let's just keep reading uh, so we can finish off this shield getting section. So giving an example, uh, so yeah, don't, don't think this is just like the new OP mod, though. It's still going to have scaling shield uh, gating with that amount. So with this mod equipped, if you had like 10 shields, you still have 0.33 shield gate. You have to fully regen your shields to get that 1.33. This makes your, it basically makes up where your shield gate is 1.33 as long as you have this mod equipped and you have maximum shields. So it, just think of like a, it's really just a decaying dragon key mod. Um, okay, so reduce it over, uh, overall by 80%. And uh, you'll get it from the Abyss of the Goth alerts. So here, decaying dragon key now caps player shield gating to 0.33 maximum. You can't play the system. You can't be like, okay, did Pablo forget this one little thing? 
He did not forget that one little thing. If you have the Decaying Dragon he equipped, your shield gating is capped to 0.33 at max. It is actually, like, really, really, really bad if you have this equipped now. So don't have that equipped anymore. Um, and that's just that's just how it is. You only equip the Decaying Dragon Key to open the Isolation Vaults, where they're called now. The Decaying Dragon Key Vaults. So keep that in mind. Uh, also, Hildren's Passive is being buffed from 3 second shield gate duration to 3.5 second shield gate duration. So Hildren's getting some big buffs indirectly. Well, I guess this one's more direct. She got extra DR on shields, and now her shield getting is extra 0.5 seconds. That's very nice. So overall, on these changes, it's definitely going to change the meta a lot. I see a lot of people are going to be running this mod uh, just to do the exact same thing as before. It also escalates Revenant as the tank meta even more. It pushes invisibility frames even more for endurance. Uh, and it also pushes overguard frames more for endurance, too, because... They can easily give a brief period of invincibility. I mean, Frost is doing so good in Endurance right now. Uh, so he'll be able to give everybody a little mini overguard, uh, overguard gate. They're trying to get their shield gating back. It, it probably will work. Um, but we're going to talk about some other things down below where it's like, why would you just not play Revenant at this point? Because Revenant is just not going to worry about any of this stuff. So as far as base mod changes, I'm not going to go over every little detail here. But basically, you can look at it like they're making it. It looks like a massive nerf. It looks like a massive nerf. Vitality reduced from 440% to plus 100% health. Wow, what a massive nerf. The problem is that these numbers were just not really displaying what actually was happening a lot of the time. Uh, they're just cleaning it up to make it look more easy to understand. You're still getting a basically the same amount of buff as before, even, even though that's ridiculous to me. 440 and 100% is the same as before. They're claiming it is, um, so we'll have to see. I mean, screenshot your Anaros build if you don't believe them, and then look at it on October 18th. So basically, um, certain frames are getting buffs. Uh, at the end of the day, they're buffing the base stats of a bunch of the frames. So let's go ahead and look at some of those right now. I've actually highlighted a couple that look really good. Uh, let me just get those lists right here. So, uh, for some reason... Okay, so also keep in mind, the amount of shields you have will dictate how long your shield gate is. Uh, so that is what you should keep in mind when you look at these uh, stat bumps for some of these frames. So, for example, I mean, Ash Prime, he got like an extra 100 health. He got an extra 10 armor. He got... Nothing else, basically. He got a little bit extra shields. Well, 100 extra shields. So, like, there would be a bunch of little changes like that. But some of the big ones on here, like, what are they thinking? They, they gave Anaros... How much health did they give Anaros? They gave Anaros, like, another, like, 500 health. Yeah. Well, actually, no. Uh, an extra 100 health on Anaros Prime and an extra 110 health on Anaros Normal. They've also buffed his armor to 240 from 225. And, uh, who... Does Anaros even have... And they gave Anaros two more energy... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that, that, he might be a lot more tanky now. Still can't hit level 10,000. Uh, Garuda got some armor buffs, Garuda Prime, and she also has an overall energy bar buff once the mod changes go through. It, I know it says, like, hey, why are you calling it a buff if it's actually a nerf? It technically is going to be a buff with the way how Prime Flow uh, applies. That's what they stated earlier. Garuda, they give the example of Garuda Prime. Garuda Prime is going to have more energy... Uh, with Prime Flow equipped. So it's going from basically 800 at current to 896 with a Prime Flow equipped. That's why I'm not really deep diving too much on these mod changes because the way that we're looking at these numbers is the really main thing that will change. Some of these stat bumps as well. But yeah, uh, some other characters that are going to be getting some good buffs. Uh, I was looking at Revenant. So remember, uh, the amount of shield gate you have will uh, be scale of how much maximum shield you have. And they gave Revenant Prime. Where the heck is he? They gave Revenant Prime. Look at this. 925 shields? He doesn't even need shield gating. So, is this some kind of like inside joke with DE? Honestly, I'm wondering this. Why does he have so many shields? He has Mesmer skin. He's going to have like a two point, a two second shield gate if his shield ever worked to break in the first place. So they're pushing Revenant even harder than ever. Um, and he didn't even need shield gate in the first place. So, that's crazy to me personally. Um, some other things are like buffing Rhino's base armor, Rhino Prime's base armor. They're buffing, uh, not really buffing too many other important things. Um, but yeah, Stein, oh yeah, another good frame for shielding. Steinax would be a great frame for shielding. Uh, so if you want to read every little individual change, go for it. Um, that's not really the purpose of this video. We got some Warframe mod changes. Uh, nothing too phenomenal here. I don't really think that we'll be bonding for shield capacity personally. Like yeah, if you have maximum shield capacity of 1100, you'll get 2.5 second shield gate. But remember, you have to regen that. So unless you're using like Pillage or Condemn, I don't really see it being a new thing going forward. We're just going to try to make use of what we got. Uh, okay, so just, you know, they, they changed the values of a lot of these mods, but it should be higher in the end. At least that's what Pablo's 
uh, claiming. There's some Necromech mod changes, not very important. Um, same with, uh, you know, Arcwing mods as well. Who really cares about that stuff? So that is going to be basically it for the shield gating and uh, mod value changes. Some big things to keep in mind here. Like I stated earlier, just equip the Decay and Drag key right now. Or rather, uh, have fun with it until it goes away. It is going away. It is legit going away. Um, but as far as do I like this new shield getting system more, I think I do like this shield getting system more. It's not going to be as mindless for level 10,000s anymore. You're going to have to actually think about what you're doing besides do I fully shield get with this build. You're going to have to like think like, am I going to have enough energy? Is there going to be enough enemies to, to chain with Harrow to get my, my uh, shield restore? Is there going to be enough armored enemies with pillage to make it where I can actually get my shield restore? The shield restore part is going to be a lot more major now. Um, so yeah, definitely take a good look at your builds. You're, it's not going to be as like free anymore, I, I, I hope. So I'm planning on doing some level 10,000 endurance runs the day this comes out. Maybe the day after, but I do want to see if my Saren build could do a level 10,000. Uh, of course, you'll be able to do level 10,000, no problem with Revenant and like Ash and all the frames you were doing it before. As long as you weren't fully relying on Decaying Drank, you should get, you should still be okay. Um, but if you were to relying on Decaying Drank, you should get, you'll still be okay. I'm hoping as long as you put, you basically sacrifice a mod slot on your build. So that Sephagoth build, for example, I need to really take a look at that on when it comes out to see if it's actually going to be functional at all. Because that, that Sephagoth build is really hanging in a threat. I think we restore like 75 shields and we have 74 shields maximum. So yeah, uh, it might look like it's an overall buff. Like, oh man, if if I have 1,000 shields, I get 2.5 seconds of shield gate. How are you going to get to those 1,000 shields? That's what, I, that's what I ask somebody that thinks this is a better uh, system than before. Or rather, the, the power of it is better than before. You have limited options. Um, I, but I do think that frames like uh, Steinex and Protea and Mag and Hildren and maybe even Trin, Trinity with the um, Energy Vampire Augment, which gives your teammates shields, uh, could be good. Additionally, some frames like Caliban might actually get a little bit of help here as Caliban's third ability, yeah, remember this frame? Uh, gives you shields per second. Now, I don't believe it will regen if you have no shields, so that's unfortunate. But hey, throw on one Augur mod, throw on Condemn from Harrow maybe, and he'll be getting extra DR from those from the shield uh, buffs as well. So lots of good things here, uh, and I wouldn't really call anything specifically a bad change. I, I mean, as I said earlier, I was never really a big fan of the Decaying Dragon Key meta. I just basically was forced to do it uh, because DE refused to nerf it, so and they're nerfing it here. Um, if you guys have any... Comments on this, let me know down below. Uh, I would say don't completely naysay it until you've actually tried it. Uh, like, yeah, sacrificing one mod slot for this is going to kind of suck. Uh, because, you know, Decaying Drank, he was an inventory gear slot thing. So we'll have to wait and see. I'm, I'm not saying, like, oh, man, Endurance is dead. Because it definitely... I think Endurance is more alive than ever now. Because now Endurance might actually be difficult if you're not playing Revenant. So, yeah, that's basically it for the video, guys. Appreciate your support. I'll see you on stream with some Twitch drops in, like, an hour. And I appreciate all the support. Take it easy, guys. Peace.